everything. This is a, a, a complete circuit that, that has various components. By double clicking on the component, this window comes up. It's called PCB decals, which is basically when you click on it, it actually shows what the library will generate when we go to the next package. And the next package is called Pads Layout. And Pads Layout is the uh, is the where we actually generate the, the the actual PCB design itself. So these are just symbols where on the on the, the, the printed circuit board they resemble circular pads with tracks on them. So this is showing you what the, the actual symbol will look like uh, on, on the PCB. Okay, so all the components have different ones. If you look at this one, then it'll have a different set of connections. And these are all physically different in terms of the dimensions and so on. Okay, what we need to do is we need to go into the the, the, the converter. Now the converter is up in this top window there, it's that little icon. Okay, this little icon says pads layout and what it's going to do is when we click on it we then need to say new and this is when we have to wait a minute but during the time we're waiting we we'll just say why we're having to wait. This will always come up because what it's trying to do is trying to communicate with the pads layout. So this pads logic package is trying to communicate with pads layout, but pads layout hasn't loaded yet. So you will get this window, don't worry about it, but you have to try keep on pushing the, the switch to button. After about 50 seconds, you will get this screen. So the next stage is to go into this option where it says design and then we've got to actually connect and actually say send netlist so the, the netlist will contain all the information about the symbols and their interconnections so when we say send netlist then what's actually got, what's actually happened now is actually it's created if we look down on the bottom here we've actually loaded this is the layout there's the layout um, icon it's now cr created the design inside that so if we click on that we then will get a window now the best way to to do this by zooming in you can see there's a pile of components there the best way is to use the window 7 option which is actually dragging it to the edge on both of them like this and so you get half and half you get both the original logic package. The next stage is that these are all in a pile. That there's our pile of components. So we do tools, disperse components, and then when you say OK, it spreads them out. So the reason of having these two packages on screen side by side is that they actually communicate. If I click on a symbol on one side, it highlights the actual um, part on the other side. So in fact this is the, the IC itself and there it is in our uh, layout package. Again if we, if we do the, uh, the other way, if we click on a resistor here, it highlights the resistor in the other one. So these two, these two packages are communicating. Now that's useful because we need to be able to lay out these, um, sim these actual components um, in a suitable position. These little fine white lines are the connections. So in fact when we had, when we had say pin 2 of R3 connected to U1 pin 2, then there's R3 and we can move them around just by clicking on them. We can actually see that there is um, various connections going to the same circuit that we've already created. So the idea is to try to reduce the tracks. These are going to be copper tracks eventually, but there's no point trying to leave it like that because you won't succeed. So the way we do it is we look at the diagram and put 
the symbols, wherever they are, near what they're connected to. So for instance, let's have this pin 5, this, this component here is close to this pin 5. So here's the component, it's highlighted, and there's the pin 5, there's the pin 5, and we can see that it's actually quite close now. If we do another one, we can say that this one is connected to pin 6, and so we can put the other one there, so we can see that that one is now close to there. So the idea is to try to position the components. This one's connected to pin 7, so we want to put that one. We can move things, other things out the way. We can also rotate them, and rotate is Control r on the keyboard. So that, that simply rotates it 90 degrees. Let's move out everything like else. So we've now got perhaps something like that. So we've got a short connection there followed by another connection there because it goes between those two. See that there's there's the track, it's going between seven and eight. So there's the pin seven and there's the pin eight. So we've got a direct translation of our original circuit into into the design. But what is time consuming and what is important is to try to get this, they call it placement, we're placing the components in an optimum position. And so if we carry on, there's one, this one is connected to pin three. So let's have this one round here. Remember we've got our navigation of the control wheel to scroll up and down. We've got control R to rotate and then we can place it in something suitable. This resistor is now connected to this LED, so it makes sense that the LED is next to the resistor. And we could rotate that again, perhaps, like that, and then bring that, either this resistor over there, and rotate that, perhaps. So we've, we've now got a reasonable, efficient connection. What we're trying to do is reduce all these crosses, these crosses of tracks, or well, the crosses of connections, um, means that we can't actually easily lay out the, the, uh, the tracks themselves, simply because they uh, will overlap. So by reducing it where we can, will help. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got J. This is the, the main power connector. That doesn't matter too much where it goes, but we can put it somewhere there. What else we've got? We've got this resistor. We can see sometimes where they go, but it's useful to have it referring to where it is here. It's actually on pin two. So it might be better to actually bring it down on pin two. Um, perhaps there, or even have it round the corner um, like that so that the tracks go round the corner okay so now what we've got now is with a little bit of adjustment we can make things a little bit more efficient uh, we don't need to have huge great spaces like this we could actually probably rotate that so we've got a reasonably square type little design that we've now converted um, from that mess of components originally. We need to convert these connections into tracks, but we've got to translate them into copper tracks. And the way we do that is that we've got to define two things. If we go to set up design rules, this is a very messy looking uh, window, but basically you say default clearance. Now on this window, we've got two things. We've got the track width. Now Americans call it trace. So the trace width is this number. Now we need to change that to something a lot fatter, like 25, because if the default is six, which is as thin as a hair, we don't want to have tracks that thin, we want to have them a lot thicker. The other thing what we want to be able to do is actually define how far apart they are, and they call that clearance. So the clearance is how far 
apart and we can actually say the same. So in other words, the difference between tracks to tracks or, or pads to tracks, they're all going to be further apart with this magic number. So we can say that. So now we're ready to actually convert these tracks in these connections into tracks. And we do that with a magic function called F2. It's not on a menu, which seems a bit strange. When you do F2, the cursor changes to a little cross with a little V on it, indicating a, a drawing mode. But when we click on something like here, it's now actually changed it to a thick line. And that line is the thickness that we specified in the, in the, track, the track width. So it's telling us where to, to go and we can zoom in and saying, well, look, it wants us to go there, so we go there. So it's guided us, or computer-aided designed us, you know, enabled us to help us in the design of where, where these connections should go. And so we can either do this by hand, but if you notice already, I'm stuck because I can, well, in fact, I could go down here, I could go all the way around. But very quickly, you find that you can't succeed anymore. You can do the easy ones like that. Well, that one was easy. But now, all right, this one was easy. But now we've got stuck. How do we get this one out? Well, you could say, yes, I could go all the way around to there. But gradually, I'm getting very messy here, and I'm actually going to trap myself to a point when I won't be able to escape. And what I want to show you is how to use the, the automatic router. So the automatic router will do all this for us, but it'll do it in a much more efficient way than we can. For, for the auto router to work, we need to actually have one more condition, and they're called constraints. And one of the major constraints, it needs to know how big the board is because otherwise it'll, it'll use almost infinite space because it doesn't know what, how to constrain the size. So we've got to put a board edge around this. Board edges are done within this option here and there's one there called board outline. Board outline, we can have, if we do a right click, so we, we can right click on anywhere and say select rectangle. And what this will do, it'll allow us to just to draw a simple rectangle of the shape of our ball. Okay, so let's just save the file before I go much further. Okay, just so to say uh, 555 or something. Right, okay. So the auto route, so we click. Again, there will be a short pause while it loads. So the, 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 the auto route will load eventually. Now, what's happened is the design has disappeared from the layout and reappeared in the router. And we can, the only way we can tell these two packages is by looking at the name. They are very, very similar. This says router and this one says layout. So we're now in the, light, the router. The actual routing command is under tools, auto route, start. And it's got a shortcut F9, which is easier than searching through menus. So implementing that one instantly, it completes the whole task. So the way we were struggling with all those tracks, it's done it in milliseconds. What it's done, it's done actually two different things. It's actually used the constraints of the board edge, so it's kept everything within the board edge, but it's actually put the tracks on two different layers. The blue is the top layer and the, the bottom is the red layer. So it's using two-sided board. Even with its layout, it's having to struggle because it's having to use a via hole. That's a via hole because it's taking the blue top layer through this hole to the red layer on the bottom. The actual status, if you click on this output window, it shows you that it, it's done 100% of the design and there was one via. And it was so quick it didn't even put the time up. Okay, so once we've completed, we then have got to go back to this layout option 
which will then take the rooted design back into it and now we're back in layout. So this allows us then to um, print the design and manufacture it. There are quite a few constraints that are useful to actually um, understand because most designs, this wouldn't be, you couldn't actually solder this up. The reason is because, for instance, this chip has got lots of red and blue tracks on it. Now that's one of the things that we can't really have because the IC, you can solder on the bottom of the IC but you can't easily solder on the top. So we need to get the auto router to actually only route on the bottom. So in other words, don't have any blue tracks. Now this is another constraint. So let's, let's get it to do the whole thing again. So to delete all the tracks, because we want to start again really, again right click and then traces, control A on the keyboard and then hitting delete key, the yes is because it needs to delete that fire hole. So that was just a way of getting back. Now these constraints as they're called, we want to constrain the router from not putting tracks on the top. Again we use this menu again, drafting toolbar and this time there's a magic one here that looks like a keep out sign so if we click on it again we should be able to draw a box around it. Now what that's popped up is to actually say I want to keep out of and you've got a choice of either the top or bottom or we want to keep out of the top. We don't want any tracks on the top and we have to say what type of things don't we keep out of which is tracks and wires so we don't want any wire holes because if you remember it put a wire hole in the middle there so we don't want that to happen we want the tracks only to be on the bottom so we're keeping out of the top there are other components as well this one we can't actually solder to very well because it's actually single-ended so that the tracks need to be on the bottom again so if we do the same sort of thing again with the keep out um, we can actually have a keep out which is a circle and then we can place a circle it's not quite in the right place yet but we can move it and adjust it in a minute and this time again we want to keep out of the top we don't want tracks and we don't want wires to move that into the right place we need to escape and then do right click. All these things are called shapes. So if we select the shape and then we can move it. It doesn't matter because this isn't real, this is just a constraint. It doesn't actually matter that it's not on the board. But that will tell the router not to put tracks on the top. So if we now go to the router again in the same way we did before, those constraints are now showing up so it knows that they're there and then when we hit the tools auto root start this time it's obeying the rules it's saying I mustn't have any wire holes there I mustn't have any tracks on the top and the same with this one there's no tracks on the top it's having to work harder because we're constraining it we're not giving it the total freedom that it had before so the router has now created just tracks on the bottom, the red ones are on bottom because we said keep out of the top and this one is also keeping out of the top. So we've now, we've now created um, a design with the constraints that we've specified which means that we now will be able to solder that chip in there without any problems.